In this Walkabout World episode, we are going to make this rustic church together, complete with stained glass windows, bell tower, complete interior, and even a graveyard. So don't you go anywhere. It looks pretty good at night time too. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to another episode from me, Avamance, in my Walkabout World series. That way is episode one, which was the little wooden rustic cottage. Here is episode two, the wooden base that we did last week. I really like the way this came out, and that was a really good example of something that I thought was going to completely fluff up. Fortunately, I think it didn't. Now, we have got to come all the way around. You'll notice this is a walkabout world. I thought, you know, if it's a walkabout world, I need to make it look nice. So I've put trees and all sorts of wildflowers and that kind of thing outside the fences. It just, I just thought it would be lovely. So we're going to go towards episode three now. And episode three is down at the end of this road. What's going to be there? Unsurprisingly, there's a whole lot of nothing, look, because we've not built it yet. But now we're going to crack on. I thought it would be good to do the thing that I was originally going to do in episode one. So we are going to build a church on this plot. I have got some really great ideas from you guys and I'm listing them all down. I'm going to be doing this forever with the amount of ideas you've come up with. I'm really, really grateful. If you've got an idea for a walkabout world subject, put it downstairs in the comments. Hashtag walkabout what you think we ought to be building. Let's crack on with this one. Like all these walkabout builds, we're going to totally freestyle it, but I think I'm probably going to be using a palette that's relatively stony. This is, after all, a church, but we're going to bring in some wood just to lift it up. Obviously, we need a little bit of stained glass and some other bits and pieces as well. Now, as always, this is going to be freestyle, but I've got a picture in my head that I want to try and transform into this canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out a template using these spruce logs. Now, the difference is these logs are going to be inside the walls, not outside the walls. This guy is going to be quite stony. So um, as a result, outside, we're not going to have too much wood. It's going to be, relatively speaking, quite kind of grey looking. And we'll, we'll jazz it up in some way. So I want this to be one of the kind of outcrops on the side so I think I need one two three four five six gap in the middle one two three four five six and that there so that gives me the kind of the image of what I want on the inside there and this is also going to be six one two three four five six and then that there and unsurprisingly we're going to turn that into a square and then along this side, I think I want a much larger length. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now in my head, I've already worked out that because of the shapes I want to put in the middle, I need that to be 15. I need 3 times 5. Easy maths. And uh, I'm just going to carry on doing this. And then what I'm going to do inside here, I'm going to get some... I fancy some stripped birch. Now, I don't often use stripped birch, but I got a feeling this might actually work quite well in this particular build because we're going to have some fairly dark things going on inside and the birch is going to offset that really, really nicely. So let me just get this sorted out and we'll crack on. I realized as I was building that this shape wasn't exactly right so I widened out that bottom structure there so as I can fit in a double sized roof. Okay, one really nice sized platform there and I think we could do something fairly special with this with a bit of luck. So I'm going to do it a little bit unusually. I'm going to start to lay out the inside first here and then we're going to go on to the outside afterwards. So 
what I'm going to do is if I put in a row of these steps, I then need to come in there, there, and there, which means that, 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 that. Oh, there's loads. <laughs> that. Uh, still going. That and that. Is that right? And then it's this one. Yep. There, there, and there. And then this can come in to there. We'll keep that. We'll keep those. Hang on. So that's there. So we've got the row of two in the middle there sorted. Okay. So I'm going to carry on doing those. And we're also going to pop these posts up. Just one more at the moment. Because I'm going to kind of build it up from the bottom up, I think, in this instance. And I need a little bit of height on these posts. Now you'll notice obviously this post is slightly in. That's not unusual in a church, so I'm quite happy for that to remain exactly that way. Bring these two up as well. And then we're also gonna bring in the wall one more high all the way around before we start to do some detail on it. I've got some really interesting thoughts as to how we're gonna detail up this wall. So that'll go like that. And then we're also gonna raise this area up by one block and this will act kind of as the you know the the bit that everybody goes up and looks at that's always raised a little bit and I think what we'll do is we'll knock those two bits out and create a bit of a step up there right so let's get this bit built up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the this level up probably one more which means that we need to pop that there gap of three and that there that there one two one, two, three, there, one, two, three, and that there. Does that work? Yes, it does. And then that, one, two, three, and that there. So that's kind of shape that we're going to be going with, with these. If I bring this around and across there, that ought to be like that. That sh should be right. So we've got a gap of four there, which utterly throws me. So we'll make that a gap of two. I think I know what I'm doing. Let's see. I placed in all the pews using those dark oak steps and using dark oak trap doors on the ends. That actually makes for a really effective terminal for those seats. It encloses them up. I then built up the walls so as I could start to visualize where I was gonna put the windows. I'm not going to be doing all of the detailing now. I did just want to give myself a little bit of uh, a guide in my eye where I want to just put a little bit of corner detail onto this church here. So, and what I want to do is I want to basically see if I can't create kind of that, see that stepping effect. And what this will also do is it will give me a feel for how high I want these walls to be. So, if I do that on that corner there, also going to do it on this corner down here. In fact, I'm going to do it on every single corner that comes out in this way, I think, because I think it will just add for a nice little effect. You can see what I'm trying to achieve there. We are also going to be um, texturing up the rest of the wall. So, for example, let's stick 
a little bit of stone in like that so you can see the standard texturing that I like to do but what I won't be doing is putting any of these stone bricks into the rest of the wall because I don't want to I don't know contaminate is that the right word I don't know if contaminate is the right word um, but I don't want to contaminate the rest of the wall with this feeling I want it to be quite obvious and standy outy what I also want to do is I want to start to guide my own eye with these windows and I'm going to put I oh know it properly slaps you in this face doesn't it this uh, this lime green it's like oh my goodness that is lime green glass but it really works I really like it and I'm hoping that what I've got in my head is going to work as well I should probably try it but I think it should be okay so if I pop this all the way around like this this is different but we're still going to put two in this is three isn't it yes it is thank goodness for that otherwise I've got it wrong get that in like that in there and we are there that's beautiful right then what we're going to do is I'm going to create two different types of plinths here one of them is going to be the font uh, the font being the water bath that is used um, to be able to christen babies and I don't know have a bath whilst no one's looking I suppose and just need a little bit of water for that I've got to use all the green that I need and pop that like that so we've got the font there you can see that's some nice movement and this fella is going to be more of a not a statue per se but we're going to build this up to turn it into something a little bit more impressive than a water font I think and we're also going to bring these out a little bit further so we can bring these here and here here oh, and here and they can come out one more and then we're going to come out just one more row like that and I think that is plenty close enough um, now what I need to do is I need to decide how high are we going to take these and I reckon if I take this do I even want it to go that high no I do not actually I think that's plenty high enough for that particular one but for these ones in here this is going to have to go higher so I'm gonna have to experiment around with this because in my mind's eye I've still not got it quite right, but I think this is the perfect height for the rest of the beams. So let's build all of these up and then I'll build up the windows and we'll go from there. Now I wanted a circular stained glass window to be the feature point of the end of the church in that wall. But it's very difficult to do a small circle so this is a Minecraft seven wide circle. So we're kind of tall enough for the first stage, I think, which means I need to start to put a roof on. And I'm trying to decide what exactly do I want to make this roof out of? Because we've got a couple of choices and I'm kind of debating between doing some spruce edging and some stone edging. I think spruce is just about going to win out on this one. So let's just pop that there. We'll get some spruce edge. Now this is going to come here, I think. Um, is that about right? Let me just work this out because this is obviously yeah so that is where it's going to go and we're going to try and create a roof that goes in first on at least this stage goes in a bit first and then goes up a little bit more uh, so that's going to be like that and then that's going to start to come in there like that I think so how many steps have I got there I've got one two three and then we start to come in well let's give that a go on the other side see if that works and then we'll join it up and once we've joined it up we'll go forward and do the rest of the stairs as well so that is there like that that is there like that pick that up that like that 
that comes there, that comes there. Right, so how far apart are we? I don't want to shoot up too quickly because that won't quite work. So I'm going to come in again one, there and there, and then this will be the last high jump off. That will go there, that will go like that, that like that, that like that. Okay, so there we go. We've got the front of the church, which is going to go there like that and then this side is going to go a little bit steeper so that can go there like that and up and down and then up and then we'll put those so we've kind of gone up if you look one early so like that like that like that like that is this going to look too roller coaster i've got a feeling it might actually let's just look at that that's going to go, oh no, we might get away with it, might be all right. So let's try that there, there, and then another one, and another one, and that up like that. We're still not in the middle yet. We're sort of there. I think we're going to need to break this out, I think. This isn't going to work like that. That's going to have to come there. I think it's the only way we can do it. We're going to have to do it in a more traditional shape. Otherwise, it's going to look a little bit weird. Uh, that there, that there, that there. Okay, so we're going to finish this roof off in that direction. We're going to do the same here to have this edge off here. Like that on that side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go for some acacia. And I thought I'd just try it because it'd look... A little bit different to what we would normally do but also it offsets really beautifully against the stone if you look there look that offsets really well against the stone so i'm going to do the roof in an acacia wood and off the back of that we'll rough it up and we'll put some like acacia blocks in there and things like that just to make it look like it's a little bit more rustic Now, with the roof on and this tower here, I'm a little bit concerned this tower might be either a little bit tall or a little bit thin, but we're going to work with it for time being and see whether or not we can make it a little bit bulkier and uh, beef it out a little bit. I think we probably can. What I now need to do is just texture up these walls a little bit more because now I've got all of these roofs in, I think it's reasonable to start the texturing process. Bats are spawning in on the inside, so I'm gonna to have to get some light in there in a moment to stop those bats from spawning. Although, you know, bats in the belfry and all that, it kind of makes sense. So I'm gonna carry on texturing up these walls now like this and hopefully I'll be able to continue with the build a little bit further. I want to be able to, yeah, there's definitely some it needs doing with this it might be as simple as perhaps putting in have I got some spruce fence let's try this that might thicken up the outside a little bit so if I look at it from a distance it starts to bulk it it might work it might work I'm gonna to have to experiment a little bit and see whether or not I can't make that work let's crack on
taking a little bit more shape now I think we're almost there with the detail I don't want to over detail the walls of this churches tend to be kind of big flat surfaces of grey with their stone etc so we don't want to do too much with it but what I do want to do is create the pathway that goes up to the front door now I don't think that in a church you can have quite the same type of pathway so I'm going to put a little bit of grass um, kind of path in the grass but we're going to not have too many I'm going to bring these all the way around to the front door you can see they are far more separated than the others and that's because I think that we're going to have more kind of stone effects stone and gravel and that kind of thing so I'm going to put in the path like this and I'll be back when I've done that one path going up to the door I think I might put that there as well and I've not put any fencing or anything else like that around it because generally speaking the pathway that goes up to a church is literally just a path there's not fencing around it I'm going to put some bushes in there now I've got to be very careful with myself so as I don't overdo the bushes but I've got to make sure that I put in enough so as it breaks up this grey just a bit and then I might also put in a little bit of vineage as well, but again, not too much in case it overdoes it. And then we need to think about what else is this place going to have? Is it going to have a graveyard? I think I might put some kind of graveyard type thing in and we'll would probably be quite close to finishing at that point. Now I felt the church would need a light outside its front door other than those beacons so we made a little standard lamp there with four lanterns and then continued with the bushes. I did decide to put just a few little fences in there so as we create a little bit of light on the subject. I then carried on the bushes and the path going all the way around the church. We are just about finished. I'm actually genuinely pleased with how it came out. Again, part way through, I was thinking, this isn't working, Avo. What have you got to do to change it? But actually, in the end, I think it did okay. So we've got, obviously, the stained glass windows, which is meant to be the ground, the sky, and the sun. So this is the church of the rising sun. So we've got our graveyard here. It looks like someone's escaped, which is amazing. Come and have a look. There is a world download, as always, in the description. Please do download the world and let me know what you think. You can see there is 
a pretty reasonable amount of detail but not too much on those walls we decided to go with a bigger bell rather than smaller bells up in that clock tower because the bell tower itself just needed something more it was too wide and open and we've got not too many bushes but just enough to give a little bit of grounds inside however we've got a different feel inside turned out to be pretty grand and I'm really very very pleased with it so we've got pictures on the wall all the pews facing in the right direction to the end where the vicar will be giving his sermon we've got these redstone powered lights here which are powered inside by levers and just pop them but they work as a really nice attractive stained glass style window up there you can see the underside of the bell the big altar there with the fire going on it makes it ever so slightly gothic with the font on that side. And at night time, that bell tower really pops with the lights from inside the roof and going up the tower as well. Then we've got the lights going all the way around the pathways that marry up really beautifully with the darkness of that graveyard. If you've got any ideas for what you would like to see in one of these walkabout worlds, then put down in the comments below, hashtag walkabout, and give me the idea that you think you'd like to see. Relatively small builds, not like a city or something like that, but anything around about a chunk or so would work. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it, and I will keep on making them. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.